fiancé cheated and dumped me because I put all of my money into Bitcoin back in 2013. So I was hanging out with a friend when the subject arrived at my ex-fiancé. Then I realized this history was too juicy to not be shared. So, back in the day, I started buying Bitcoin. I wasn't a serious buyer, I just thought it was a neat thing. I had just proposed to my ex and things were pretty good. I started learning more about the whole concept of a decentralized currency. How modern banking is destroying the economy and government-produced currencies have been melting through the years. It just made so much sense, so I started seriously buying more. At first, my ex didn't mind. She used to make condescending comments about me buying Monopoly money and how stupid it sounded. Things started to go sour when I told her all my savings were now in Bitcoin. She was livid, called me an immature, irresponsible man-child. How dare I put our future together in jeopardy buying stupid things? I tried to explain to her many times the concepts behind it and how a currency that is deflationary by default had to increase its value. She didn't bond any of it, always with condescending comments about my cognitive abilities. I reminded her that it were my savings on the line. I would never demand or ask for her to invest in something she wasn't comfortable with. She argued that it didn't matter the money was mine, we were starting a future together, and I had to consider our financial security before putting all my money in stupid things. We were never the same after that fight. After that, maybe a bit out of spite, I doubled down on Bitcoin. I sold my car and bought more. I was overweight and lost 25 pounds biking to work. We started to resent each other more day after day. About a year after the big fight, I discovered she was ducking a co-worker of hers, a shoulder to cry on became a D asterisk K to ride on. After a nasty fight, she took the ring off, threw it at me saying, I hope when you're bankrupt and alone you finally realize how stupid you are. She started dating the co-worker not long after. Her family sided with her and all hate my guts. Those were tough times, the price kept going down, I doubted myself many times but I held on. Needless to say, my investment paid off. After the first surge, I sold some of it, made profit over my initial investment, and kept some and then bought back when it hit 5k. I won't go into details about my finances, but let's just say I don't really have to worry about money anymore. My ex became just a distant memory after so much happened. Last week, I met an old friend that used to live abroad. He is a common friend of me and my ex. We had a good time catching up until the topic became my ex. Apparently, she varied that co-worker, had a couple of kids and was living the life she thought impossible with me. Good for her, I thought. Well, that was the case until her husband's business went under because of COVID and she found out about his affair with a 20-year-old with sugar baby. Now they're amidst a nasty divorce procedure and financial trouble. I would be lying if I say I don't feel just a bit happy about her demise. It is the cherry on top of my whole story. It just makes it too juicy not to share. I'm thinking about sending her a Christmas card this year. Story 2. Is it unfair for me to ask my boyfriend to do something he feels uncomfortable with? I, 24F, met a guy, 22M, online without the intention of dating him. I like chit-chats, so we were just gonna talk and stuff. But of course things got flirty and we decided to date. He's my first boyfriend. This guy feels right, and he is very sweet. I am not pretty so I don't think I have the right to be picky. So, when we were talking at first maybe for a few months we hadn't seen each other's face. He never asked me to show mine which I'm relieved but I couldn't help but wish I looked beautiful so I'd be more confident to show him myself. Fast forward I realized I love him so much that I don't want to feel like I'm hiding anymore. So I did it. Scariest thing I've done so far. Show him myself even with the risk of him leaving me because I'm not decent looking. I was so relieved when he reacted positively. He accepted my imperfections and I fell even deeper. Months passed and I was always hinting I wanted to see his face too. It's like he's not real since we only talk online. Seeing him would give me a face to think about. But it has been more than a year and he still hasn't shown me. He always says it makes him uncomfortable and it turns out he has the same insecurities as me and I totally get it. But it has been a year and a half almost. Sure he sends mirror selfies lately, with his face mostly covered of course. And these mirror selfies only come once or twice a month. Not even consistently. I just wonder, I'm willing to face my biggest insecurities for him, but he can't do the same for me. At some point, we broke up because of this. I told him, ha, huh? this is what I want and that this is what would make him more real to me. Not just some notifications I get frequently. Even in my imagination his face, 
is that stupid bitmoji he has on Snapchat. I just want us to be like a normal couple. To my disappointment he chose breaking up with me over showing me his face. But I love him too much. Obviously we're still together, and from our recent fight I told him I'd be more patient and he could take his time. He said he'd try to take pictures for me but not the kind that I want. But occasionally I have these urges to force him again and I always try my hardest not to. He says the more I force him, the farther I get from seeing him. I couldn't care less how he looks like. I just want to S.E.E. him. Is that too much to ask? Let me add that I don't think he is trying to hide his age or anything like that because I've seen him. But it was an accident. Flipped camera by mistake. Twice. But it was so quick that I don't really remember what he looked like. But he is not some old dude. He looked fine. Just scared and insecure, I think. TLDR, I asked, basically forced, my boyfriend to show me his face, which he repeatedly refused because he is very insecure about his looks. Me too. I told him I don't care how he looks but he'd rather break up with me than show me. But it's been over a year. I love him and just don't know what to do. I don't want to lose him. Story 3. I'm 30 and my parents still use the silent treatment to maintain control. Am I being too sensitive? I left my parents' church about five years ago. It's pretty extreme and has actually been given a designation as being a sectarian group, pretty much a cult, and it practices excommunication and the Christian teachings are extremely fundamentalist to the point where other Christians are viewed as lesser or lazy comparatively. While they do not say it outright, it is considered worse for an individual to leave this group and attend a different church vs leaving and never. Going back to church, anyways, I digress. Since I have left this group, I naturally have been nixed from the community. My parents kind of pretended it wasn't happening for a while, but recently I told them I have a boyfriend and that I will never be coming back to that group. Due to COVID, my excommunication meeting was put on hold. The response to this was simply to ignore, shut down and give me the silent treatment. My dad said I betrayed them and then walked away from the conversation I was having with him. It was horrible to tell my boyfriend they still had zero intention of meeting him. I haven't heard from my mom since October 1 when I wished her a happy birthday and my dad, who I work in the same building with, completely ignores me and looks right through me when we pass in the hallway. As a child, the silent treatment was very effective with me as a form of control. If I came home late, or they went through my phone or journals and found something they didn't like, they just become stony silent and glare at me. Sometimes they listen in on my phone, calls with friends, and I could only have an email account that they had access to. When these situations would occur, my anxiety would spike, and I'd ask questions and be ignored. Sometimes I'd get frantic and cry and plead with them to talk to me, and it would take days sometimes for them to tell me what I had done wrong. I thought this was normal. Particularly in a church setting, it was normal to revere your parents and consider them the all-knowing authority that was always right. When I got older, I realized that even within the extremist church, this type of parenting was abnormal. People used to make fun of the fact that me and my brothers were kept firmly under the thumb and barely had room to breathe. Therapy has helped me establish that this behavior was, and still is, immature and abusive. I have no problem accepting that this is a terrible way to communicate with people, let alone your children. However, I know that there is no point bringing this up with my parents. I tried once and my mom told me I was imagining things and I realized it would never be a productive conversation and I just need to get over it myself. But emotionally, it feels unnatural to both be estranged from my parents and be dealing with such juvenile behaviors. I sometimes feel envious of other people who have adult relationships with their parents. Whenever I see my parents, even outside of these issues, there's always a tension in the air. I'm often called defensive and reactionary, temper which is the direct opposite of what other people say to me, even ex-partners who are more than willing to tell me where I am failing. If anything, I hear things like, you're a doormat. You are a people pleaser. You worry too much about things you can't control. You ignore red flags. TLDR, I can't help but feel like I'm throwing away my family relationships by just leaning into their behavior and accepting that I can't do anything about it. They grow more and more foreign to me every day, and I feel guilty thinking that I am causing this and ruining my own life.